Good morning. It is Saturday morning and we are getting ready to go camping because this was like Steph's really like genius idea to spend some time together. Although I, as much as I love Steph and Norm and the crew. Yeah, so we're going camping. So um, packing. Uh, yeah, so when you're bringing like a family of five packing, you got to bring a lot of crap. I would, we've got bedding going on. We've got all the bug dope and sunscreen and snacks and stuff and pillows because we're in a tent trail that we borrowed. So we need pillows and blankets and sheets and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm kind of over it. And all of this, and have you guys seen the weather out there? Do you know what weather we're going camping in? Yeah, that's rain. So come here, Rory. Come here, Rory. She, Rory's got her camping jammies on so she can stay nice and warm and cozy. So tell me, what are your top three things, if you're going camping, that you absolutely need to bring? Because we've got a lot of crop here, and I suspect we don't actually need this much. So top three things in the comments below. Let me know. We'll see you soon. Say bye, Rory. Mm. Welcome to Flying for Flavor. I'm Stephanie Pichet, and uh, this is your camping episode. Now, we didn't tape the intro and everything else uh, while we were camping uh, that weekend, partially because we have busy schedules, uh, partially because we had one day of solid rain, and also I really wanted uh, Cynthia and her family to enjoy the process for the weekend without always having to worry about whether she was on camera, getting videotaped, that kind of thing, and kind of let her tape little things and take photos here and there throughout the time uh, just so that her family can get the authentic experience of what it's like to be at a provincial park here in Ontario. So uh, we were at Miccosu Provincial Park which is located uh, in South River which is a little town just outside of Sunridge near Huntsville uh, almost in the Muskoka area. It is about I would say from North Bay 30 to 40 minute drive south on Highway 11. One of the reasons that I chose this park, uh, specifically Miccosu, was because uh, it is part of my uh, summer heritage, I guess, uh, our family legacy. I have been going to Miccosu, I think, at least for one night at some point every summer my entire life. Um, I can't even think back to think of a summer that I may have missed even during my busiest times in business. So. Miccosu is one of the provincial parks here in Ontario. They have them in other pro provinces, for those of you who are not familiar with them. Uh, it's a little bit more than a, a KOA campground or a traditional trailer park or someplace where you would just basically pull up your trailer and stay for the summer or for a week. Uh, there's a little bit more space and greenery around each campsite for a little bit more privacy and seclusion, but it is still monitored by the ministry. It is a government controlled uh, park. It has uh, general rules and guidelines. Um, it is well taken care of. Uh, fees are, I think, very reasonable for what you're getting for it. There's a lot of extra facilities and fun things. So you can go for a day pass, you can go for an overnight, you can do weekends. You can actually do all your reservations online. Uh, ahead of time, choose your campsite, see photos, that kind of thing. It makes it really easy to plan your summer. Now, when I decided I was going to do a camping show, I have been talking to my co-hosts about this for, gosh, it's been at least a year, year and a half. And the number one objection that I got was the tenting part. Now, I have to admit I've had uh, summers where I've stayed in a little tiny tent. I've had summers when I stayed in a tent trailer. I've done a standard camping trailer. I've been in a large camping trailer. I've done cottages. I have basically tried uh, all the way from the high-end glamping all the way down to a little tiny tent in the rain. So I'm experienced at all of it. Uh, and I'm always worried when people said they're scared about a tent. So there's a couple, um, couple of notes of misinformation that might be out there that I wanted to clear up. Tents these days are easy to put up, uh, easy to maintain, uh, don't take up a lot of room in your garage or storage, and uh, so there's never an excuse that you can just go camping at any particular time. They are quick to set up and quick to tear down, so even inclement weather won't scare you away. And to prove that, I actually put up my tent this weekend on my own. <laughs>
Now, just in case you're gonna get that rain after all, you wanna make sure that you have your ground completely covered. So I have put a, just a uh, tarp on the base of where my tent's gonna go. It's about the same size as the base of my tent or slightly smaller, just so that it protects the underneath in case there's water that runs underneath it or something and it helps to sort of keep things a little bit drier. Um, just because it's got a bit of a breeze here, I put in my tent poles on the corners just to hold it down for a minute while I get the rest of the stuff because I'm doing this solo. Now, there's gonna be side poles that you're gonna pull out the sides to give you extra room. This is considered an eight-man tent, but because I'm such a princess, it's gonna be just two people. <laughs> and pigs for the far ends. Okay, I didn't plan this right and I didn't put, uh, didn't pack the upper screen on top of that, but luckily I bought extra tarps. So I think I have one, if not two. If I have to pull the, the one from underneath, I can still do that. So you gotta learn to improvise when you're out camping, out in the wild. So I'm gonna cover these because they're calling for rain tonight. So this way it'll give me a bit of a protective shelter. It's not pretty, but it's gonna get me through the night. So at least um, I was smart enough to go to the dollar store and pack um, clothespins. So just plain old cheap clothespins. I always use them for uh, clotheslines and stuff when I'm camping anyway, so you might as well grab as many as you can because they come in a pinch to do things like this. The other thing that would have worked is a plastic drop sheet like you'd find in the hardware section where the painting stuff is. Um, my parents, aren't really camping anymore so they gave me this huge box of odds and ends that they've been saving for previous trips so I uh first I told them I wasn't going to need it I got everything don't you worry about it and now I'm thinking it was pretty handy because if it starts to get too blustery tonight and these things don't stay on at least I have another backup <laughs> Oh, 
I taped a little video for you and you can find it in the show notes for those of you who want to actually see how it's done. But here's the basic uh, premise of it. Most tents these days are not as complicated as you may have thought or they were when you were kids. They are, uh, there's some that are basically a one person quick pop-up job. Another ones actually have poles that are all strung together with elastic so you never lose a part. A lot of them come with um, additional uh, tents and canopies and um, extra sections to kind of make you feel like you have a little bit more space. Um, economically, they're fairly inexpensive, especially if you buy them off season, check your local hardware or outdoors areas, just to check and see if you have, um, if you're planning to do some camping here and there and you're worried about the pricing of it. If you keep an eye online, you'd be surprised at how many tents are, uh, for lar family size ones are under $100. Couple of notes of things to bring. Uh, if you are nervous about sleeping directly on the bare ground, you can get those foam, uh, foam mats that kind of roll out. You can also get, of course, air mattresses, which are anywhere from very inexpensive ones all the way up to these self inflating queen size, two feet off the ground air mattresses. You can also get the air pumps that are both battery operated or standard electric so that if you manage to get a campsite that has electricity, you can have that air mattress uh, inflated and ready to go for bed at any time. Sleeping bags are also really inexpensive now. You can get very thin ones because you really don't need a whole lot during the summer. Maybe just a couple of extra blankets or an extra quilt from your house will do. Um, and then I'd always talk about plastic. You can get plastic tarps at just about any hardware store, even the dollar store carries them. Um, have a couple of extra on hand. You can lay one underneath the tent to protect it from water or runoff if your campsite is not a completely level where you're putting the tent. You can also use them for draping over top of tents, uh, picnic tables or other things that you wanna protect during inclement weather. Um, they basically come in really handy, easy to dry off, fold up and then put away for the next time you have to go outside. And then my last little tip for tents has to do with lighting. Uh, if you uh, don't get a place that has electricity where you can actually plug in and bring your own extension cord uh, to provide all the electrical um, glamping needs that you might need that weekend, uh, make sure to have uh, battery operated little lanterns or flashlights with you so that you can have light and function during any kind of weather. Okay, we have to talk about food. There seems to be this idea that when you're going camping that you have to survive on things that you find in convenience stores like hot dogs and potato chips and marshmallows, of course. Uh, but if that's your plan, then you do you. We don't object to that. But we had to uh, kind of create things for our weekend camping that were a little more tasty, a little bit more adventurous, more like what we would normally eat at home and being able to have something that's sort of easy to throw together so that we're not grasping at last things last minute or stuck in a place where, you know, if fire wouldn't start, it was raining, um, we couldn't get ice enough for our coolers or the grocery store nearby didn't have what we were looking for. So we had to come up with meal plans. So one of the easiest ones for us were soft tacos. So we had easy to make in the rain, because <laughs> it did pour, soft tacos that first night, because it was pouring. We had extra plastic draped over the kitchen tent, which was over top of a picnic table. We kind of gathered in there uh, to sort of help each other and kind of do it as a group. But the cool thing is, is that the only thing we had to actually cook was the chicken, beef, and shrimp that went into those soft tacos because the rest of the stuff is actually chilled or ready to go from the cooler. So just by packing some grated cheese and some salsa, guacamole, sour cream, and then the wraps, we had easy to eat and walk around. And if you had to eat while you were standing or take it with you and it was great for leftovers, everyone got their choice of chicken, beef or shrimp, or if they wanted to combine all three. And I have to admit, uh, by packing my one little cast iron pan, I was a very happy lady because uh, I have to admit, as much as I liked all three, that beef that I cooked was phenomenal. All right, second night, uh, we wanted to do something a little bit different. We kind of toyed around with doing like a big mixed grill thing and I had brought along some fresh chorizo sausage from a local butcher here in Sudbury. And 
Uh, so Cynthia and her husband went to a local grocery store and got other kinds of sausages. So we thought, let's just keep it easy. It was a beautiful sunny day. We spent some time at the beach. Uh, kids were running around doing their own thing. So we thought, let's just make it really easy because we knew we were going to be eating most of the evening. So we did different kinds of sausages. We served it with or without buns. We sauteed peppers and onions again in that cast iron pan, which can be done on a portable stove. If you have one like a Coleman stove that uses propane, or you can actually just do it right over the fire. Provincial parks have that grate that has the um, that you can actually sit things on for cooking on the fire, which makes it really easy. And then the last thing is that everybody loves potatoes cooked in foil. It sounds very basic, but instead of just doing regular foil wrap, I had brought along uh, some foil pans. So those, um, I guess there would be about, uh, they're called a half pan size. So if you pack a couple of those things, they're a little bit sturdier base and we just toss the potatoes uh, lots of garlic, lots of butter, salt and pepper, basic seasonings, uh, covered in foil. And then we again, we place it on that grate on top of the fire, just kind of kept it at a low burn and coals. And the potatoes were probably the best we ever ate. We were fighting over the last little bits. So here are some of our other favorite tips to get you thinking about eating while camping just a little differently. So uh, marshmallows are not as easy as it looks to get them perfect. So you gotta do them right. So you heard me talk about coals. So low and slow over coals is always the way to produce the best combination of a soft interior and a crunchy exterior. You can buy long wooden sticks at hardware stores and marinas that are nearby, uh, reusable metal ones. Uh, you can buy those just about anywhere, including dollar stores. Or you can be a true woodsman and carve the end of a broken branch, like I used to do when I was a kid, with a sharp knife until it's a clean spear. Uh, one of the breakfast treats uh, that we were treated to by Cynthia's family, uh, we actually had them both mornings because they were such a hit, are these ham and egg cups that we made in disposable foil muffin pans over the fire. We use cooking spray to coat the insides a bit just to prevent it from sticking a little bit more. Uh, we folded in some deli ham in each cup, tucked in some fresh baby spinach, a large egg, and sprinkled with grated cheese. We covered that pan loosely with foil and set it on that rack over a low fire or coals. Uh, we just kept checking periodically until the whites were set and the yolks were done to our liking. Uh, even when they were cool, they were great for grab and go snacks uh, when you needed it to feed a crowd just like we did. There we go, the key to the perfect marshmallow. You wanna have coals? Careful, babe, you're gonna turn that one and turn that around. So you wanna put your marshmallow right into the coals, not in the fire, because it just makes fire. Whoa, if you wanna set it on fire, that's okay too. That's good this is my second go on this marshmallow. You wanna make sure it's not sliding off, so stick your finger on the end. Mine's sliding off. And then you just wanna toast it over the hot coals. That's like the hottest part. I don't know what to do with it now. You eat it, honey. You eat it, sweetheart. <laughs> I know. So but... now we see got, got that caramelized Grace, brown. Look how gooey. It's amazing. And okay. yum. I'll take it because I'm not really allowed to roast it myself. Look on that side, Norm. Not as perfect as the first one. That one's pretty good. And then, once it cools oh, yeah. a little bit, oh. I got that from you can pull. Ah, oh, yo, hot. You can pull it off, and there's still more marshmallow to make another hot marshmallow. It's amazing. I remember. And finally, it's my turn to talk about the food part, and I had to share my ultimate treat, and it is our famous family mountain pies. So I'm not sure if it was always called mountain pies or if that's just what my grandparents called it. Anyhow, I don't know where it came from originally. I think my, my maternal grandparents used to make something similar, and then my father managed to find an old uh, double mountain pie maker um, with my grandfather's old camping and hunting gear. And it's essentially like a big sandwich maker. So kind of like a panini press, but not really. It's got space in the middle for filling. So it's all about the fillings. So it's really easy to do. So if you can find them at, again, your local hardware store here in Canada, of course, Canadian Tire will carry them. Sometimes a dollar store or other bargain type store might have them. You're mostly gonna find singles nowadays. So they'll basically look like it's a an iron or stainless steel square sandwich press with a very long handle. The handles, of course, you don't burn yourself. <laughs> But essentially you can get some that are made out of cast iron, uh, some of them are non-stick, you can really get a whole variety of them. So there's so many ways you can do this. With this one tool you can basically treat yourself all day. So think breakfast, um, leftover eggs, sausages, uh, bacon, um, 
You can add a little tomato sauce in there, uh, some cheese, that kind of thing. You can have an instant breakfast sandwich. So this little sandwich press, when you open it up, has space for regular sliced bread on either side. And you can either butter it if you need to, if it's not nonstick, or if you just like that extra crunchy butter flavor. And then choose your fillings. Uh, you can do anything, I mentioned from breakfast, you can go into uh, pizza type toppings with mozzarella cheese and marinara sauce. You can do straight cheddar if you're craving a grilled cheese at some point. I like a slice of tomato on mine. Uh, then you can go into some fun dessert things. And this is the one that we always like to share with the kids at the end of the evening. Traditionally, it used to always be um, pie fillings. So if um, my mother or my aunts or anyone had leftover pie filling that they made for tarts or something um, during the week, or they had some rhubarb from their home gardens or blueberries that they wanted to cook down, any of that made perfect little fillings for these little sandwiches. So that's why they're called mountain pies, because it was actually like having a pie. And you can mix it up. So some of the favorites that we made that weekend, um, this past weekend, were um, banana, peanut butter, and mini marshmallows. Yeah, for all of my sweet tooths out there, you're loving that one. Um, I brought in a container of ricotta cheese, and then you can have any kind of fruit preserves or jams to put in that, and it's like a cheesecake. Uh, you can do diced apples with a little bit of dolce de leche, and yes, you can get it pre-made now in most grocery stores and at Costco. And then the one that kind of just sort of fell together was a banana and dolce de leche one, which uh, I was, it's a little too sweet for me, but I did find that um, everybody was kind of almost applauding by the campfire up to that one that seemed to be the biggest hit so uh, you can experiment with just about anything leftovers go in it but that again that one little thing um, cooking over the fire made things a lot more fun a lot more interesting so some final tips about camping at provincial parks uh, here is Jade Amy and Aiden from Mikasu to give you five tips on making your camping even more enjoyable <laughs> Hi, I'm Jade. And I'm Amy. And we've worked on Ontario Parks for the past three years. Our friend Aiden is going to tell you about the five items that you should always bring camping. Five items that you should always bring camping. Number one, a positive attitude. Number two, a flashlight. Number three, rain gear. Number four, shelter. And number five, lots of water activities. <laughs> So I just experienced for the very first time the amazingness that is a comfort station. So like I remember growing up and going to like campgrounds and, and the like and you'd go into these um, huts and they'd have toilets and they'd have showers um, and they would be uh, kind of grimy, gross with like random creepy people hanging around them. So we're here at Mikasu and the really cool thing is that these comfort stations they've got all these individual there we go, all these individual little shower huts with like water that's literally the perfect temperature. Then you've got your washrooms, which seem to be immaculate all the time. We see people going around with little carts all day with cleaning supplies and keeping everything nice and clean. And then they also have, just a little bit further down here, uh, and if you can see the sign, there we go. That's the laundromat where they actually have washer and dryer. So, um, being the princess that I am, it's kind of nice to know that I can go somewhere and get clean because I really tried to go without a shower today and it just didn't happen. So one of the cool things about camping, I have to concede, is that these comfort stations are totally worth it. So I made sure to check out all of the behind the scenes videos and pictures and everything in our show notes. And this is episode 45 of season two. So of course you can find it at stephaniepichet.ca slash flavor two 45. And uh, I will make sure to include any other little links and stuff, including the one to the Mikasu Provincial Park for those of you who are interested in it. And uh, don't forget we are on a two week timeline this summer. That's just to give us time to uh, work on other projects, uh, get some downtime with our own family and friends. So our next episode it's going to be all about pickles. Uh, it's not going to be your standard, standard pickling episode that I was planning on, but it's going to be more about uh, everything pickle that is popping up in pop culture and in recipes and in dares and online. So make sure to check that out Saturday, August 24th. 
So in the meantime, make sure to rate and subscribe to us on any of the podcast players and on YouTube. And don't forget to get outside. We only have so much of this beautiful summer left. And every time there's a little bit of sunshine or a little bit of breeze, uh, it's time to enjoy nature. So anywhere you want to do it, whether it's your backyard or your park, uh, make sure you get outside. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks so much for watching this video. We love putting it together. It's so much fun. All of our favorite things, good food, good drinks, a lot of travel talk, and we put it all together in one fun show. So make sure you follow us here, click on the videos below, uh, follow, subscribe, and find us on your favorite podcast player. We'll see you in our next trip.